Hi, today I wanted to share with all of you some free resources from TI calculators that you can use with students during this remote learning distance learning period. Um, so you would start on the TI education website right here. And on the search area, there's a tab that says COVID-19 support. Um, if you click on that, you'll get to a download now link um, that will take you to all of the free smart view systems that TI is offering. I'm gonna select the one for teachers. And because I teach middle school math, um, I primarily use the TI 30 access and TI 30 calculators. Um, today, I'm gonna specifically talk about some tips and tricks to use the smart view for the TI 30 access. So I'm gonna go ahead, um, set this up. All you need to do is click it, type in your email address. Mine is math with Miss T, and I'm clicking submit. Um, choose the software that you need for your um, computer. I would choose this one. The biggest piece that you need to keep in mind is to just make sure you're keeping this page open um, because you will need this license number later on when you download your software. So I'm gonna go ahead, um, give you some time to download it for yourself. Um, and then don't forget to put that license number in as well. At this point, hopefully you have the Smart View downloaded. Today we're going over that TI30XS. Um, so before we start anything on here, I wanted to go through some of the buttons on your Smart View just so that you're familiar with what the buttons do. So the first one here um, just allows you to choose different versions of calculators. Um, with the subscription for the six months, I believe you have access to all of them, um, which is really helpful. Um, this button here just gets rid of the type screen. So if you click on it, it'll just toggle it on and off. This one here would get rid of the key press history. Um, the camera will capture your screen. So if you have something you want to show your students, like five plus six, enter. Um, it will show up both on the screen here as well as your keypad history. The camera itself will only capture the screen. Um, so this is something that you can share with students as well if you don't have a screen capture for your laptop. I'm going to exit out of that, not save it. Um, the two buttons down here just toggle the position of the calculator as well as the position of the toolbar. So this changes the calculator, this changes the toolbar. Um, there's a couple more buttons up here on the toolbar as well, um, very similar to what you're seeing on your screen. So I'm not going to go over those specifics. I think everything you're going to need will be mainly in this area. Something that is super helpful on the Smart View if you are planning to create digital lessons for students is if you actually do the screen capture, you can um, right click it or double click if you're on the Mac, um, copy it and then just paste it into your slides. Um, and this is a really quick way for you to be able to show students what you want them to do. Today, I wanted to share the top three things that teachers have to explicitly teach to their students on their calculators. The first is the difference between the subtraction and negative sign. Second, how to use parentheses, especially in order of operation problems. And third, how to type in an exponent in the calculator students typically have a pretty hard time identifying the difference between subtraction and the negative sign. I like to tell them that they're the same thing, um, subtracting a positive, same thing as adding a negative. However, it gets confusing because on the calculator, those two signs are very different. Um, and if they're putting in that subtraction sign for a negative, it will give them an error. So for example, if I were to, let me clear my clear uh, keystrokes, five minus six, that would give me negative one. But if we were to go and do five negative six, that would give us a syntax error. And so I think it's super important when you start your students on calculators to identify that those two are different functions. A next step could be asking students then, how could I use that negative sign to do the same thing? So if I were to clear this, um, Ideally, they're able to tell you five plus my negative six would give me negative one. Um, so just make sure your students are really clear about that difference in keystrokes. 
Let's move on now to order of operation problems. I think the biggest issue I've seen with my students is when they get a calculator, they tend to forget their order of operations, um, specifically with the parentheses. Um, so what I'll see a lot, so let's start with this first problem here, is they'll just go ahead and type out the expression as is without the parentheses thinking, okay, I'm using a calculator, it should know how to solve it. Um, and then obviously it would give them the wrong answer. Um, so making sure that students are aware of where to find those parentheses, keystrokes, um, and also understand that it needs to be used is super important. So these are your parentheses keystrokes. Students will need them to solve the problem. So let's go ahead and put this expression in. So five minus parentheses three plus two close parentheses. And that should give us zero. There's another problem here. We can go ahead and solve that as well. Very similar, just making sure that students are putting in those parentheses keystrokes in order to solve those questions. Even outside of calculator usage, the parentheses is a huge issue for some students. When we move into calculators, I think sometimes that skill just gets lost in the scramble. The last skill I wanted to go over was typing with exponents. So the exponent keystroke is this up arrow right here. So let's go ahead and type in our first exponent. 2 to the power of 3, and that will give, oops, to the power of 3, and that will give me 8. Um, I think the exponent function looks a little different than what we might expect, where students have never seen this function before if they haven't been used to like typing it on a computer. Um, so it is something that needs to be explicitly taught. Um, I think if students are just doing to the square, 4 squared, that's pretty easy, there's a square function right here. But if students are doing anything more than the second power, they will need that up arrow key. So those were my three tips for the TI-30XS calculator. Um, hope that was helpful. I know there's a lot that we're learning right now, and so I didn't want to overwhelm us with too much information just yet. Um, but I do think like this is a really great software for you to use, especially if you need, still need to teach those calculator skills in your classroom. Um, comment below if you do end up using the Smart View in your classroom. I'd love to hear how it goes and any other tips or tricks you have for other teachers um, as they make that transition to distance learning over the next few weeks. Thank you.